It's pretty rare that I get excited or really interested in a new product. I try as much as possible to use gear uh, for a pretty long period of time unless I'm going through some kind of phase where something broke or it's worn out and I need to replace something. Last year it was my shoes. I tried two different types of shelters and I tried some different backpacks. I sorted out the shelter, I sorted out the shoes, but my pack was just still a bit of an issue. Black Diamond announced their Betalite 45 Ultra Light Pack. Definitely caught my attention. It's probably caught a lot of people's attention and uh, I got my hands on it. So I'm gonna go over my first impressions, see what I think, if there's, uh, is it gonna live up to the hype? We'll see. Before I go over the new pack, I wanna go over a brief history of different ultralight backpacks that I've used. And there've been a few. First is the Golite Jam 2. I got this in 2007 or 2008. 2008 for sure I had it. Maybe I got it in 2007, can't remember. I used this for over 10 years, put a lot of miles on it. It's a basic uh, UL pack made by a commercial, you know, large scale company. So use this a lot. 2010, I think it was Mountain Laurel Designs Exodus. I got this as a bigger volume pack. The Golite Jam is in the 40 liter range, this is 55. This pack is pretty much by definition the original design of a UL pack that Ray Jardine came out with. This is a very no frills pack, very lightweight. I think it's 14 ounces, there's nothing to it. Use this a few times, not my favorite pack. 2019, big change, updated to a kind of modern ultralight pack by a company called Northern Ultralight here, that's made here in Canada. Uh, VX fabric, still pretty basic design. A few things that I like about this pack, a few things that are a bit borderline. 2019, 2020, 2021, uh, main pack 2022, uh, that was my main pack as well. Uh, and then 2023, uh, I switched it up a little bit. Pack that I've been using the most is the Ultimate Direction 40 liter fast pack. Uh, I've got a review up about this one. It's really not my favorite pack. There's a lot of stuff going on with this pack that's not great. The one thing that kind of saving, the saving grace of this pack is a really comfortable running style vest harness, which I, I kind of fell in love with the running style vest harness from this pack and it made me overlook all the bad things that were going on with this. So I used this for almost all my trips last summer and uh, yeah, it's definitely got some flaws, but running style vest harness is, uh, <clears throat> is almost a must for me now. What year was it? Um, huh, frames out of this one. So this is the ULA Catalyst. This is my winter pack. I got this, I think in 2021 or 2022. I've used it for two winters now, two or three winters. Uh, I got this as a large volume winter pack, but still kind of based on uh, an ultralight pack design. Cottage company made in the US. Definitely some things I like about this pack, some things I like less about this pack. I did like the uh, Catalyst enough to get a CDT, uh, but it was really this pack that made me realize there's some things about the design philosophy for ULA that I, I, it's just not my favorite. To me, a lot of those packs highlight Two, kind of, two or three main problems with all of the ultralight packs on the market, which is either they're made by cottage companies and they have features that are really particular to that company and the design philosophy of the, of the owner of that company. Then the other side is the big commercial companies try and do something and they kind of miss the mark. When I saw the, the Black Diamond pack, what struck me about it was that it really looked like it, it, it stuck to the core of ultralight philosophy and I was just wondering you know could they have done it basically so just for full disclosure I did reach out to Black Diamond this is a sample pack I didn't pay for it I'm gonna be testing it and reviewing it in depth over this year but this is kind of a first impressions so this is a 45 liter ultralight backpack made of challenge 200 sailcloth so challenge 200 on the sort of main pack body and challenge 400 on the high wear areas. The bottom, it has a running style vest, which is definitely one of the things that I was interested in. I know that Black Diamond makes 
you know, really great running vests. And I have a Black Diamond ski touring pack that I like a lot. It, it's well built. Removable hip belt, I like that because I generally speaking don't run my pack with a hip belt. I don't want to have to cut off a hip belt and ruin it. So this one, I can remove the hip belt and use the pack without the hip belt. Neat little feature too is that you can remove the hip belt but leave the webbing strap on or take them both off. So it's modular that way. You can really tune it to how you want. Standard side water bottle pockets that slant up, which I also like. I had a pretty bad experience with an Arcturic day pack last year that bottles fell out of. The, the side pockets were just built weird. So, you know, they stuck to pretty tried and true design with a slanted pocket. That means that I can actually reach these while my pack is on, but because they slant up a bit, I think they help retention a, a bit. Whereas if, if it was right across the top, it'd be hard to reach. And if it was low, your bottle tends to fall out. Big big stretch mesh pocket. Interesting that they put some kind of non-stretch material up here. I don't know what the design philosophy for that is. Very different from a pack like my Northern Ultralight bag that has a pretty small front stretch pocket. So this you can open up. There's some Velcro and you can pull out the little piece of padding that's in there. It's not even a rectangle. So it's not something that you would pull out and say, okay, I'm gonna sit on this instead of having a sit pad. I think that would be kind of annoying, but you can definitely take it out to lighten the pack up. There's a water bladder, big pocket and a port for your water bladder and two aluminum stays that you can just slide out. And then the other part is the opening, which is just a very simple classic style roll top. Um, nothing else to it. It doesn't, um, it doesn't tie down to the side of the pack like Hyperlite Mountain Gear packs or even the ULA packs, which I prefer. I really just like a simple roll top on the top that I cinch down like this. I've never had any issues with that. I really don't like having to compress down to the side. I, I find it creates a weird dynamic there. That's actually my preferred design because I normally end up just cutting those straps off. Then when it comes to the harness, I'm surprised about this. They're different on both sides. One side is basically a big soft flask pocket and the other side is this zippered pocket, which you know, I don't know exactly what the rationale for that is. I guess these are very deep pockets. This is a 500 ml soft flask. Goes in that harness pocket really nicely. So if you had something like bars or food or something like that and you put it in there, it'd be pretty hard to get out. This side has this zippered pocket and a small secondary pocket. So I can fit my phone in there. I don't know if it's where I'd want to keep my phone, but you can definitely put things in there and they're easier to get out because you can get right to the bottom of the pocket when it's zipped open and it zips shut securely. So I honestly would prefer having just two water bottle pockets because right now I'm kind of conflicted. Where do I put my bear can? Uh, do I put my bear can here and then not use a soft flask, which is kind of a trade off or, you know, what do I do? I'm not sure. The hip belt is pretty nice too. Good size pockets. They fit a compact camera, no problem. Uh, they fit a phone, no problem, definitely fit snacks. And like I said, this comes off. You also have load lifters, which in an ultralight pack, I don't know how necessary that is. I generally, um, I generally don't use the internal stays and then load lifters are meaningless. But overall, it's a really polished product. You know, all of the details in my mind are there. The main pack body is completely seam sealed. In terms of the weight altogether, they claim 890 grams for a size large. Mine comes in at 899 for a size large. When I take everything off, so the hip belt, the stays, everything, uh, I, leaving the, <clears throat> with the foam still inside actually though, it's 620. So that's 22 ounces or 32 ounces, right around 32 ounces at the max. It's a lightweight packet at 22 ounces. It's not the lightest pack, but it is, very durable material. So a lot of things going on that I appreciate. Little details, just how they've added things in, I'm guessing to high wear areas, how it's been sewn, how it's put together. This is without a question, a premium bag. Obviously comes with a premium price tag, which is probably where most of you are, if you've looked into this pack or seen the ads for it, it's a 400 US dollar pack. In Canada, that's retailing for $500, which is not cheap. That brings in my second 
concern about this pack. I think there's gonna be people that don't have a true ultralight loadout that buy this at a big box store and then complain that it's not comfortable. They claim up to 40 pound load capacity. I think that's gonna be at the way at the upper limit. You know, it's a very simple aluminum stay design. It's very hard to connect a load directly to a hip belt like this. You know, it doesn't have that true connection between the frame and the hip belt like packs that are designed for carrying heavy loads. I think that it's gonna be good for up to 30 pounds. And that means that unless you have a base weight below 15 pounds, you're gonna get up to that 30 pounds really quickly. You've got a pretty lightweight loadout, like 20, 15 to 20 pounds, you're gonna be able to squeeze in an overnight in this. If you have a sub 15, so you know my typical base weight is 12, 10, 12 pounds, I'll be able to get tons of use out of this. I think it's gonna work very well. If you're considering the pack, I hope this is kind of useful just to see a little bit what it's like. And um, if you have got the pack and you've tried it out, let me know uh, in the comments how it's working for you, what your thoughts are, and I'll see you after a few weeks once I've put some miles on it.